Hello, welcome to Mom Talk. We're always so glad when you join us. If we haven't met, I'm Anna, and hanging out with me today on the chairs and couches, we've got Christine <laughs> and Judy and Jacinda. So we are talking about joy today, and each one of us has so much to share on this topic. Mm. So if you woke up today and felt like maybe you lost your joy or you're struggling to hold on to your joy. I'm telling you that you are in the right place. So stay with us. And ladies, I wanted to start off by talking about a term I heard just a couple weeks ago, actually on real life, there was an interview with a woman who threw out the term defiant joy. And that struck me because I never heard those two words put together before. But what she said is that as Christ followers, we have available to us a joy that defies our circumstances. Right. And so when I looked up the definition of the word defiant, it right. was obstinate and uncooperative. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like a very, those aren't nice <laughs> words to describe my character unless I'm attaching it to my joy right. in it's the midst of Yes, an adjective. of a dark, mm -hmm. when I'm in a dark place, it has helped me to remember that in that dark circumstance, that defiant joy is with me. It is mine. It's my oh, choice so whether I give right. my joy away or whether I hang on to that joy. And right. really, it's a good reminder to know that Satan wants to steal our joy because he knows that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And a lot of times we think about how joy is just in that oh, exciting time mm -hmm. in life and not that time where we're struggling and, and it's there. We don't always feel it, but it is there. And I was thinking personally for myself, I went through this horrible time by leaders in the church who hurt me drastically okay. in my past. And that joy, I didn't feel feel it and it was horrible and then right. I watched my daughter for what it seemed like lose her joy when her baby brother was born and it mm -hmm. as a mom it just tugged at my heart and God showed me a whole different side of that weeping lasts for a night but joy comes in the morning mm -hmm. he was like Judy you need that trial you need that pain that horribleness for me to establish that joy right. and it's not this superficial thing that that I can just conjure up. It's mm -hmm. not this fake right. happiness. It's this supernatural just impartation when I'm going through that struggle, but also because of that struggle, as I count it all joy and I focus on Christ, he develops that as I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. I don't always feel it, but I know it because there's this confidence that I normally wouldn't have, or there's this hope that all of a sudden comes trickling in, but it's, it, it's made me be thankful for those trials right. because that's how the joy is formed in me in a deep way, and yeah. so I don't lose it. And have you, know? you found that when you can cling, hold on to that joy, that you come out a stronger person Definitely. on the other side, more effective as a servant Definitely. of God? Yes. Right. All the way right. around. I I think about when when we were discussing that joy was going to be our topic today. Yeah. Um, joy and happiness are not the same thing. That's yes. right. They are not the same thing. True. I got some teacups for Christmas, and I <laughs> love them. When I pull them out of the drawer, I look at them, and I hold them, and I get giddy. I'm, I even giggle. <laughs> I hold the cup, and I love you, cup. <laughs> Only women get giddy over <laughs> a teacup. Over teacups. <laughs> Someday, though, one of my children is going to break one of those cups, right. and my happiness will become mm -hmm. sadness. Mm -hmm. Joy is based on a fixed truth. Right. Joy is based on what Jesus has done for us. Right. Um, Jesus said, so you're talking about how how difficulty, uh, you know, enhances joy. Um, in Hebrews 12, it says that Jesus, for the joy set before him, mm -hmm. endured the cross, right. scorning its shame. Right. And right. He, did, he did all that he had to do and sat down at the right hand of the Father mm -hmm. because of joy, a fixed point at yes. the end of everything else. Right. Um, so joy is not, you're right, it's not something you can conjure up. It's a noun. It's something out there that God has for us. Um, I was reading through the book of John a little bit about joy. Um, when you read from about chapter 14 up through 17, Jesus talks about the things that he said to us. Mm -hmm. They make our joy complete. He said, I've told you these things so that your joy may be complete. complete what right. did he say? He said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. You can't do any of this without me. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the spirit is love joy. Okay, right. that all comes from God. It's not something that we have to produce. Yeah. 
and his truth makes it complete in us. So I guess when I think about joy, you know, you have to remind yourself, it's not based, it's not the same as happiness. It right. just isn't, um, but right. it, it's powerful. Yeah, and so I, what I hear too is that if we fix our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. on the truth that is in the word, that is our truth because yes. it's God's spoken word, that that truth will help to complete that joy, to form that joy through the power of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit as we yeah. fix our eyes on that. Well, Christine, you had some very practical tips for... I do. And, and first, I wanted, like one of my life verses really is James 1, 2 to 4, and I wanted to read it. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Mm -hmm. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. nothing. So we do need yeah. the trials. And so, but in the last episode, we talked about discouragement and how I really struggled with discouragement. Yeah. And so I kind of like, it took me a long time to come back to where right. I needed to be. And right. so I wrote down some of the things that I think really helped me. And one of those things was to slow down. Mm. Exactly. Yes. I reduced my expectations, exactly. you know, and, and maybe it's only for a season, but maybe it's forever. Right. Maybe your kid's never going to do that thing you want them to do or your husband. Um, and maybe it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And so reduce those expectations. Mm. I had to reduce my commitments mm. um, and, and my leadership. Like I had to step back from my leadership and allow others to lead. Yes. Right. And then right. just researching, you know, they talk about reducing your social media trolling. <laughs> of course. And, yes. And increase your actual interaction with humans. Right. So those are my those are my practical suggestions. Right. For those, are, those are so great. And social media can leave us feeling empty. Yes. People are satisfied. giving their highlight reel. Right. You yeah. don't see the struggle. So that's, if you compare yourself there, that's say goodbye to right Jory. There. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. So. Moms at home, if you are struggling today to find your joy, know that as a daughter of God, joy is your inheritance. It belongs to you. Nobody can take it from you. So hold on to it with all of your might. Get in God's word. Put on praise music. Get some girlfriends around you to bring encouragement and reclaim your joy today. It will come. Yes. It ladies, will come. Thank you, Jacinda, Judy, Christine, for mm -hmm. being here. And speaking of joy, we have Sydney with the good news. Mm -hmm. Take a look.